Warning, this product contains extreme nostalgia. Has your job got you down? Is adulting not as fun as you thought it would be? Do you want a way to recapture that happiness from when you were a kid? At Retrostalgia Box, you feel like a kid again. Comics, toys, and video games hand curated from the past and straight to your door. Unbox happiness at RetrostalgiaBox.com. Once again, that's RetrostalgiaBox.com. Yeah! Have you ever engaged in a serious debate over which is better, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Have you ever played Smasher Pass using only characters from Star Wars and Marvel movies? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we have the podcast for you. Listen to the Steam Gentleman, the podcast where an expert panel convenes to ask the questions about pop culture and social commentary that other podcasts are afraid to ask. Listen to the Steam Gentleman on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back, everybody, to the Real World Chronicles. I'm your host, Brad Drake, and this is All Elite Wrestling. That's right, everybody. We're back in action with AEW, and tonight we are running live event tour number nine. We are at the AT&T Center in Dallas, Texas. Let's check our absent workers here, and it looks like nothing but who... We expected to be out. No problems there. What are our backstage incidents here? Looks like a lot of protege work going down. Yes, indeed. And all right. Now that that's all out of the way, we can head over to our booking screen here. Now, let's take a look at our show for tonight. Okay. It's Friday night. We are running... This live event, we've got a big crowd lined up for tonight, no doubt about it. In our opener, we are going to see Anna J versus Ruby Soho. The Butcher and the Blade are going to challenge FTR for the world tag team title. Matt Hardy is going to mix it up with Adam Page. Pac is going to face Claudio Castagnoli in singles action. Sean Spears is going to battle John Moxley in the semi-main, and in our main event, everybody, we are going to see Daniel Garcia, Sammy Guevara, and Chris Jericho versus The Elite, which of course is Kenny Omega and The Young Bucks. Again, I am not the biggest of fans of a fan of The Elite, and this match would probably be something awful that I would never watch, but I understand that there are certain things that AEW fans like, and we're going to give it to them here in a live event. All right, everybody, so with that said, let's get to booking. And I think our opener is 12 minutes, yes? Jay versus Soho. All right, here is Anna Jay. And here is Ruby Soho. This one's booked. doesn't matter to me which female wins here. So... We will leave that one open-ended. Up next, we have our World Tag Team title match. And we are going to have that one go 12 minutes. And we are going to see the Butcher and the Blade, a team I actually like. I think they work well together. And they are going to face the current Champions of the World, FTR, who are criminally underrated in this mod. All right, the World Tag Team title is on the line, and we are going to have Cash Wheeler get the win for his team, and FTR will once again defend those belts. All right, Matt Hardy is going to mix it up here with Adam Page. They're going to go 14 minutes. Hardy versus Page. Now, we have Adam Page doing this heel thing in his feud with John Moxley, so he is going to beat Matt Hardy but he's going to beat Matt Hardy by cheating. 
because that's what heels do, everybody. And if you don't know, well, now you know. It's exactly what heels do. Matt Hardy, despite his advanced age and his, uh, well, let's just put it this way. He can't move in the ring like he used to. There's no doubt about it. He's 48 years old. But with that said, for 48 years old, that guy can still go. Um, and actually him and Adam Page, as long as Matt Hardy calls the shots in the ring, would probably be a decent match because he could probably slow Adam Page down and maybe actually do some wrestling moves. And that would probably would not be a bad match. All right, Pac versus Claudio Castagnoli. Here is another one that could be a train wreck because Pac just moves at 150 miles an hour. Um, but he was also trained right, and I'm sure if he wants to, he could work a really good match. And I'm quite certain that he and Claudio Castagnoli would have an outstanding match, especially on a non-televised event like this where they could take time and do what they wanted to do. So we're going to have Castagnoli, who is still the reigning Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, we are going to have him get the win here. All right, up next we have Sean Spears and John Moxley. Sean Spears is another guy I think is pretty talented in the ring. He looks good. He knows what he's doing. Um, I don't quite understand his gimmick, and I'm not sure anybody else does either. The whole chair thing and the sitting in the chair and swinging his head around thing, I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. And he's wrestling John Moxley who wants to be Stone Cold Steve, Stone Cold John Moxley, Austin, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> at Sushi Onida, and Mick Foley, Terry Funk, all wrapped into one. Um, I, I don't understand what that guy's doing or saying half the time in the ring either. Um, he is a talented guy, and I think he's another one that if he was actually harnessed and focused, and not hell-bent on going a 1,000 miles per hour every single match. He'd probably be a lot better than he is. But it doesn't really matter what I think. We're giving the AEW fans what they want here, and Moxley gets the victory. All right, here we go with our six-man tag main event that I'm not even going to try to pretend isn't going to be a complete and total disaster. So it's the Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Elite. And this one would just be a total train wreck. There would be bodies all over the place. Nothing would make any sense. And it would be just exactly what the Bucks fans like. <laughs> so we're going to give it to them here. See, everybody? I know how to book for my audience. All right, here are the young Buckies. Here is Kenny Omega. Actually, if you had Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho in there together, they both know how to put on a good match. The question is, would they? That is the question. I'm not even going to try to make this an epic because they wouldn't follow it. Uh, it would just be a train wreck. Um, so we're going to book this one open-ended. It doesn't matter to me who wins. We are at 111 minutes, which is a time period I tend to like. And let's go ahead and start this one. Let's see how we do here. All right, Anna Jay and Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho gets the win. With the destination unknown, 51. Pretty good score for a ladies' match here. I'll take it. And FTR makes a defense of the tag team title against the Butcher and the Blade. Lots of green here. Lots of money. Because that's what green equals in TEW. It's money. 62 overall. Again, I feel that Harwood and Wheeler are criminally underrated. Uh, bonus city here. I don't see any takeaways except for the inconsistencies and declining physical ability. And that's all right. Moving right along here, Matt Hardy and Adam Page. See my prediction here? Got a decent match here, a 70 overall. I would imagine Matt Hardy slowed him down and showed him what the heck to do. All right, Pac versus Claudio Castagnoli gets a 72. Another one I had hoped for here, and Pac outscores. Castagnoli, 74 to 67. Uh, surprisingly, neither one of these men are starting to show their age yet, which is good. They both are in ridiculous condition. 
no doubt about it. Spears against Moxley. Moxley, 72. Spears, 48. Moxley gets the win here with a 65. I'm sure that comes after 17 false finishes, but I digress. And we're moving right along here to our big main event that gets us a 75 overall. And Chris Jericho pins Matt Jackson with the code breaker. There you go. Omega with an 84. 70s for the Buckies. 60s for Jericho and Guevara, and a 59 for Garcia. I'll take that main event. That's a good score. Those are the takeaways, inconsistencies, declining physical ability. Totally understood. We should get a gain with this one. And we do. All right, we're going to make a speech. I'm pointing out Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood. I'm also going to point out my man Matt Hardy here. I can't wait for his brother to come back. Great performance, great performance, good performance. We're going to make that speech. Cash Wheeler is pleased. Dax Harwood is pleased. And Matt Hardy is pleased. And this one takes us back to the main screen here, everybody. And for us, we have another live event coming up here on Saturday night. And this one will probably run in the southeast region. Pretty much just because we can. And I'll put together that card another time. Let's head back to the main screen here. All right, we got some incoming here. Darby Allen did a loan with Noah. Cool. And Rampage got 737, uh, 1.2 million viewers overall. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, let's see, Noah ran last night. How did they use Darby Allen? Chris Ridgeway beat him. Fair enough. All right. Who wants more money? Yuka Sakazaki wants more money. Um, sure, because I'm never going to book you. No problem. That girl looks like she's five years old. All right. Uh... Should we take a look around the game world here? We just looked. Oh, Ring of Honor ran. Cool. Yuta and Keith Lee over Aldis and Hook, 72-74. See this, everybody? You see the work everybody is getting in? The experience that's being gained here? Arya Davari, we let him go. I had no plans in using him. Let's take a look at his popularity. Track his progress. See that, how he's gaining? Because of Ring of Honor, everybody. All right, and uh, just so you know, I had some disappointing news. The India thing just was not going to work for Global Force Wrestling. There was just not enough talent available in India, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. So now we've moved this over to Ontario, Canada. So it is going to run out of Ontario, Canada. All right, so we'll see who they go on to sign here and how things go. So that's going to do it for us, everybody, for this episode. For those of you that are interested in catching these episodes early and YouTube ad-free, make sure you head on over to patreon.com slash powercast network. You can find not only these shows early, but all of our super mod shows. You can find all of our spreadsheets, and you can also find a lot of really cool stuff on there that's not posted anywhere else. Packages start at just $5, everybody. Give it a shot. I think you'll like it. If you're also into the Supermod, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. You can also find us over on Reddit under the subreddit of TEW 2020 Friends. Also, don't forget, we are on Discord, and we are listed under 1987 Supermod. For those of you that are new to the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, and also leave us a message below. Let us know what you think of the channel so far. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.